haven't worn this one in a while. So what am I doing? Hey, hey, everybody. Everybody. I'm really sorry. Thanks for joining me. What are you filming for? Hello, friends and neighbors. Let's talk about accuracy. So on Sunday night, I finally, after like four months of saying I was going to, got to see the movie The Social Network. I'll do the review once I can get the DVD off of Netflix and actually have clips to show and all that sort of thing. For now though, I'll say that I thought it was a very good movie. A lot of people who saw it thought it was a very good movie. But one of the most frequent criticisms I heard of this movie was that it wasn't accurate to the real life events upon which it's based. Actually, it's technically based on a book that somebody wrote, but... It, yeah, it's based on real life events. Basically, these complainers are saying that the things that Aaron Sorkin wrote into the screenplay that happened really didn't actually happen. That Aaron Sorkin is tweaking things and changing things and essentially distorting the truth in order to tell a compelling story. To which screenwriter Aaron Sorkin replied, Well, yeah. And this sort of thing isn't unique to movies that are based on real life events either. There are a lot of literary and cinematic adaptations of stories out there, and a lot of people have hang-ups over how accurate that adaptation is to the original source material. For example, the Harry Potter movies. Now, I will say that there are a lot of legitimate complaints to make about the Harry Potter movies, but some people can't get past the fact that they're not like the books. Or as another example, Jack Zipes. Jack Zipes is one of several people who study fairy tales, and he's kind of what I would refer to as a fairy tale purist. Specifically, he feels that Disney adaptations of fairy tales do not do justice to those fairy tales because they're not accurate to the source material. And to a certain point, I agree with these people. I mean, accuracy to the source material is important, otherwise it's no longer recognizable as the source material. In other words, if you're going to change the source material so much that it's not even recognizable anymore, then you may as well just write your own original story or book. But the thing is that accuracy cannot and should not be the most important consideration when doing an adaptation of a story. The most important consideration has to be, are you telling a good story? I've talked a little bit about this before, but when you are adapting something specifically from text to visual media, you have to make changes in order to make it work. And good adaptations manage to find that balance between telling a compelling story but still saying accurate enough to the source material that we recognize it as the source material. Let's take, for example, Disney's The Little Mermaid. Now, most of you know that I hate Disney's The Little Mermaid, but it's not so much because it's not accurate to the source material, even though it's not. My problem is that the changes that they made were not, in my opinion, replaced with anything of any greater value. Meaning that I didn't find it a compelling story, and therefore it was just an inaccurate telling of the original story. But folks, we cannot be purists about this. Adaptation, the very word adaptation, has the word adapt in it, which means we have to adapt, we have to make changes to the source material. Did Aaron Sorkin report everything 100% accurately as it happened? No, of course he didn't. First of all, we don't know 100% accurately what happened. And second of all, this wasn't a documentary on the making of Facebook. This was a story. It was a story that was recognizable, and a lot of the details that we remember from the early days of Facebook were there, but it wasn't meant to be 100% accurate. Is accuracy important? Yes, but it's not quite as important as we're making it out to be. But that's just my opinion, and I'm eager to hear yours, so leave your always thoughtful and insightful comments in the comments. And until next time, this is Matt Guyon reminding you that a duck's quack does, in fact, echo. It's just kind of hard to hear, so listen closely. Three quick things before I go. First of all, yes, I know I need a haircut. Second of all, this is my entry for the Fizzy Olympics vlogging category. And third, I'd like to do a question video sometime soon, so leave questions for me in the comments. Any questions regarding the Twilight Books vs. Movies review, I will ignore. Just so you know. Bye! Perfect timing.